Um, I was at a law school uh, at Chulalongkorn University studying law, like in other students. Mm -hmm. And then I started to have interest in international affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because my uncle, my fa father, younger brother, mm -hmm. Uh, was an ambassador, and so we visited him uh, at various places. Then he was ambassador mm -hmm. um, in Moscow, in Denmark, yeah. in the uh, Netherlands. Uh, my mother, as I told you, she was a professor of French. French. Mm -hmm. At that time, we had no Google mm -hmm. and no internet. Mm -hmm. So my mother had to go to France, to Paris, to update mm -hmm. herself with mm -hmm. the new literature, mm -hmm. with the new books all the time. Oh, I so I accompanied mm -hmm. my parents to, to Europe, especially Paris, every year mm -hmm. for over 10 years. So mm -hmm. I have to say that I had very good exposure mm -hmm. to, to foreign countries. Foreign, foreign and, culture. Mm -hmm. Yes, and my mother was so afraid that uh, I would not uh, have interest in the Western culture. Mm -hmm. So whenever I was we were in Europe together, she would bring me to see cathedrals, mm -hmm. uh, churches, mm -hmm. palaces, uh, telling me uh, story, uh, narratives of the history oh. of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, she was also invited by Japanese universities mm -hmm. and Ministry of Education, Monbusho, mm -hmm. to visit. So I accompanied her as well. Mm -hmm. So with that exposure, I felt that, well, maybe Domestic law alone, criminal mm -hmm. and civil law, is too narrow in my view. Mm -hmm. So I started to concentrate on international law when I was on the fourth year. Fourth year of Chulalongkorn. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But the reason that I went into law school, I think my father had some influence. Mm -hmm. uh, I chose Faculty of Law Chulalongkorn mm -hmm. as number one when mm -hmm. I got in. I was ranked uh, number four at that time on the transit of examination. <laughs> and, uh, because my father got his law degree from Kapasa, uh -huh. he said that you know working in Thailand, knowing law is very important uh -huh. because law permeates all everywhere, disciplines. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah, all disciplines. Either you want to be government official or the uh, academics or the you know working in the business sector, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the background of law is mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. um, so you know with that, I started at the law school and I got to be interested in international law, um, and. Uh, you know, I decided to broaden my perspective. Mm -hmm. Instead of focusing only on law, mm -hmm. I decided to focus on international relations. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I was at the Fletcher School of Diplomacy, mm -hmm. I focused on international law and international economics, mm -hmm. uh, much less than, at that time, international mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that uh, the real world, uh, you have to understand in interaction between law, economics, yes. and politics, right. Right. Uh, because that's how the real world works. So I, I studied there, and after graduating uh, the Fletcher School, then I felt again that, well, I've been in the area of international relations for two years. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would like to go back a little bit to a more law-based, law but like not mm -hmm. uh, very focusing on domestic law, but more mm -hmm. international law. So I decided to apply to Harvard mm -hmm. Law School, and got accepted. And after a uh, master degree in Harvard Law School, I applied for the SJD, the mm -hmm. PhD in law, and I got accepted mm -hmm. as well. My, my mentor, I had so many favorite professors, mm -hmm. Professor Leo Gross from mm -hmm. the Fletcher School. Leo Gross yeah. was a in Fletcher. Yeah, he was yeah. a Fletcher Leo Gross. Yeah, he's very famous. Yes, uh, he was the one who wrote the, mm -hmm. the, League, of the League of Nations. Mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Alfred Rubin, mm -hmm. uh, so those are the two professors that uh, I studied international law. Mm -hmm. At uh, Harvard, I had a chance to study with uh, Oscar Schachter. Oscar Schachter, yeah, right, from yeah. Columbia. He was on leave uh, at Harvard for a year, yeah. so we became really close. Mm -hmm. We became oh, almost really? like a friend. Yeah. Uh, after I attended really? his seminar, he invited me to his house. I had a chance to to have a good discussion with him, mm -hmm. like one on one, like this, mm -hmm. and uh, learn a lot about his, mm -hmm. his experience of. Uh, Drafting the Human Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Human Rights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I work on my master degree uh, thesis at uh, Harvard Law School with uh, Professor Clyde Ferguson, who mm -hmm. passed away. Uh, and then later I became uh, acquainted with Professor David Kennedy. Yeah, he went, yes, yeah. a young professor at that at time. At that time, right. At that he, time. He also went to Fletcher. Yes, yeah. Yeah, he got his PhD from Fletcher, mm -hmm. a bachelor from Brown. Mm -hmm. And we became, uh, you know, I began to know him uh, very well, and I like his new ideas mm -hmm. about international law back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So I decided to work on my PhD thesis mm -hmm. dissertation mm -hmm. with uh, Professor David Kennedy. Mm -hmm. My second uh, advisor, second reader, is Professor Daniel Tarulo, mm -hmm. who later became one of the eight 
members of the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. He just finished his term uh, last year mm -hmm. and is now back as professor at uh, Harvard Law School. Harvard Law School. Daniel mm -hmm. Tarullo, T A R U L L O. Mm -hmm. So uh, David Kennedy and Daniel Tarullo uh, have brought me new perspectives mm -hmm. on international mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. uh, not the naturalist approach, mm -hmm. not the uh, positivist mm -hmm. approach, but a new critical, critical approach. Legal studies, yeah, legal legal critical legal, legal studies, studies, international mm -hmm. law. Of course, in the very first days, mm -hmm. uh, the critical legal studies is very um, has received a lot of uh, resistance criticism. Yeah, and, yeah, right. and criticism. Yeah, criticism. But uh, in the later years, I think they have. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, been modified, mm -hmm. and then I think they could communicate mm -hmm. with uh, other school of thought mm -hmm. uh, uh, quite well. Right. Uh, I, I think that uh, the critical legal studies have offered a very interesting mm -hmm. uh, perspective, perspective yeah. of the international law. Yeah. It's like you look at a glass of water mm -hmm. from one side only. With the critical legal study, science. you look at the other okay, side, the other side look from right, the top, yeah. look from the bottom. Yeah. No one is right and no mm -hmm. one is wrong, mm -hmm. but I think it broadened. It broadens mm -hmm. your perspectives. It was developed by the professor Koskian. Yes. Yeah, critical legal studies. Yes, so yes. I was very impressed by his writings, uh, especially published, published at the European Journal of International Law. Yes. Yeah, many yes. times. Right. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And then uh, I, if, when I studied the first year at the Fletcher School, I came back and I got married. Oh, uh, yes. My wife. Uh, uh. Uh, was at that time an engineer because engineer. He, yes, oh, really? she, she graduated uh, electrical engineering oh, really? from the Faculty of Engineering at Chulalongkorn University. Oh, oh, yes. At that time, there were thirty students mm. out of five hundred. Oh, thirty students female. who were female. Female, who female? So the faculty has to have a special rule for female students. Oh, a special rule for female students. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, you know, after we got married, she went to Tufts University mm -hmm. for a master in economics. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she switched from uh, engineering. electrical engineering to mm -hmm. economics mm -hmm. and then she came back and worked at the Thailand Development Research Institute, mm -hmm. TDRI, mm -hmm. and she became interested in the environmental economics. Mm -hmm. So she got a scholarship mm -hmm. to continue her education, mm -hmm. uh, PhD at the University of Cambridge, mm -hmm. England, and she got her PhD from environmental mm -hmm. economics mm -hmm. and came back taught at Faculty of Economics mm -hmm. at University and mm -hmm. later set up her own foundation mm -hmm. called Good Governance for Social and Environmental Development. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's my that's my life. Do you have any, any reason why you go went to uh, the United States rather than France? Rather than France? Oh, that's a very good question. I think uh, the area that I was interested mm -hmm. in at that time was uh, law and international relations, relations right. and in particular international mm -hmm. economic law. Mm -hmm. when, when I did my work at Harvard Law School, mm -hmm. it's very much on international mm -hmm. economic law mm -hmm. uh, because maybe because of the Fletcher School curriculum as well that they have international right, law right, and international yeah. economics mm -hmm. and international mm -hmm. politics, like three major fields. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see that during that time the area of international economic mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. uh, is not was not mm. very uh, well uh, mm. organized in mm. Europe as yet mm. uh, compared to the United States. Mm. I think the United States uh, has interesting programs mm. on uh, international law, diplomacy, mm. international economics, mm. uh, a wide variety of mm. choices for you mm. to choose from. Mm. So I decided to go there. Yeah. But in Europe, of course, at that time, LSE mm. is what mm. LSE is mm. economics. But uh, it's not very much a French tradition mm. uh, on international economic yeah. law. Ah, yes. Uh, that's one thing. And mm. secondly, again, it's an influence of my parents because mm. they feel that uh, uh, there are very few graduates from France. To France. Thailand. Mm. There are a lot of graduates from UK and mm. United States. Mm. So with your alumni of universities from the country, mm. uh, and they come back, they always uh, communicate with each other. And he says, so, you know, why don't you look at the United States so that you have a large number of alumni, alumni. so that you can have more friends mm -hmm. when you come back. back right and here. so we had a university tour, mm -hmm. you know, when before I graduated mm -hmm. from law school, my parents brought me to visit various universities in the States, mm -hmm. in France, in, France, in, in England, UK, yeah, yeah. and then he, he let me choose mm -hmm. which one, so I studied the prospectus, mm -hmm. So and I decided to to, to yeah. choose Fletcher School. Oh, wow. uh, you have founded the Asian Peace and Reconciliation Council and are serving as chairman of the council. 
Would you briefly introduce the APRC? Yes. Um, since I left office in 2006, mm -hmm. uh, I continued to attend international seminars to meet people. And it's our attribution that even though we left the office, mm -hmm. we uh, communicate with each other. Whenever we pass by our capitals, we get together for lunch mm -hmm. uh, with those who are not in the office and those who are still in the office. So we maintain the friendship. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, a lot of people, um, former prime ministers, former foreign ministers have said that, Sir Kiet, why don't you try to get us together? You are still young. I'm not young anymore. I'm 61, but at that time. At the time. <laughs> they said that at least younger than others. They said, why don't you get us together? Because Asia is rising. The economy is growing. But uh, Asia doesn't have the mechanism to reduce tension. Mm -hmm. Asia doesn't have the mechanism to promote peace. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. So we met and we, you know, informally, we met after international seminar from mm -hmm. time to time. And so everyone pushed me to do it. Mm -hmm. So I decided to organize a meeting mm -hmm. in 2012, mm -hmm. in September. Uh, about uh, 18 of them came. Mm -hmm. you know, former Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi, mm -hmm. uh, from Malaysia, from Malaysia. Uh, former President Jose Ramos Hota from East Timor, mm -hmm. uh, Hassan Mirajuda from Indonesia, Joseph Kala, who joined us as, at that time, former Vice President of Indonesia, now he's back as Vice President mm -hmm. of Indonesia, Joseph Kala, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Jaya Kumar, Jaya and, Kumar. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Kawaguchi mm -hmm. you know, from uh, Japan, and later we have the you won't want mm -hmm. from so the former foreign, foreign minister. Foreign trade yeah. minister. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we decided to launch it, mm -hmm. and we base it. Now we have about 28, 29 mm -hmm. members. Um, we we base on the two, three important mm -hmm. principle. Mm -hmm. First, we would operate through quiet diplomacy. Mm -hmm. There are issues that uh, uh, foreign ministry or diplomats mm -hmm. would not be able to. Uh, have the negotiation mm -hmm. because of the domestic politics back mm -hmm. home, especially the issue of the uh, territorial integrity, no, you know, for the uh, uh, land boundary mm -hmm. delimitation or the order. sea boundary delimitation. Mm -hmm. No one could budge an inch. Mm -hmm. No one can be seen to be giving in mm -hmm. uh, at all mm -hmm. because no. of the nationalistic yeah, uh, sure. sentiment at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, the issue of uh, Dr. Nagashima, uh, mm -hmm. the issue of Tiyu, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. Sinsaku Island, the issue mm -hmm. of South China Sea, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. Sometimes mm -hmm. may not be difficult uh, seen by international mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. because we have examples elsewhere mm -hmm. of how you can resolve these fields, mm -hmm. but politically it's very difficult. So we feel that sometimes we need a quiet diplomacy. We need someone who has had a good stature. Uh, someone who know uh, the current policy makers in the governments in, in Asia, uh, an organization that, uh, like APRC, we consider it as a non-state uh, 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 international organization. We don't represent any country. Mm. We have no interest mm -hmm. in any... It's kind of NGO. Activity. It is NGO. It is, it is NGO. Uh, the difference is that we don't do the NGO work. We don't advocate policy. Advocate policy. You know, we don't take the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, but mm -hmm. we, we, don't, we don't support this mm -hmm. party or that party. Mm -hmm. We do, you know, the discussion behind the scene. Mm -hmm. We pick up the telephone to mm -hmm. some of the leaders or mm -hmm. policy makers. Mm -hmm. Very influential. So, yeah, how we can be helpful. Mm -hmm. If they say, oh, you know, we can do it ourselves, it's fine. Mm -hmm. If they say, okay, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Then we say, okay, how we can be helpful? Mm -hmm. you, do you want me to carry uh, a message to another country? Yeah. Yeah. They say, oh yes, but can you tell them that this is exactly what I mm -hmm. want, but I cannot tell them in front of mm -hmm. the officials. Mm -hmm. So we did, and I uh, told uh, uh, the minister of another mm -hmm. country that I think, if you do this, mm -hmm. then uh, the situation would improve. Mm -hmm. So it is that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. we, we, we tell the, the, the public who we met, mm -hmm. but we did not disclose the detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We would act only mm -hmm. if there's a consent mm -hmm. from parties to the conflict. Mm -hmm. We would not intervene mm -hmm. into the conflict mm -hmm. or into the problem. We would ask mm -hmm. whether we could be helpful, mm -hmm. but we would not intervene if uh, we, uh, uh, we, are not, politics. Yeah, we are not uh, uh, invited mm -hmm. uh, to do it. Uh, so the quiet diplomacy has proved to be quite useful. Mm -hmm. 
we maintain dialogue. Mm -hmm. We do not need any limelight. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is any success, we never come to the public and, mm -hmm. and claim mm -hmm. that the, the, the solution to that problem is because of, mm -hmm. of our work. Mm -hmm. So that's the principle, that's the philosophy ah, ah, behind APRC. Mm -hmm. So you are right, it's a non-state, we call it non-state international organization. Okay, sure. okay. It's like the, the NGO, NGO, but in the uh, UN term, it's non-state international organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, I met uh, Secretary General Ban Ki Moon. I told him about it mm -hmm. in New York, and he said to his uh, colleagues, "He said, see, you never told me that there are so mm -hmm. many Asian uh, leaders and policy makers who can mm -hmm. be helpful. You, you always gave me the European names, mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> like Eric. <laughs> yeah. you, see, you see, because uh, because uh, Europe has that club in Madrid. Mm -hmm. It's a club of over one hundred mm -hmm. leaders, mm -hmm. uh, so the name have been there for oh. a long time." But in Asia, APRC just started, just launched in mm. 2012. Mm. And they elected me as a chairman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that I would be a chairman for one year. Mm -hmm. And then they said that you have conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So the first annual meeting, they asked me to leave the room. And I came back and they said that your term is five years. <laughs> <laughs> so when I finished my term last year, uh, uh, no, the year before last, uh -huh. Uh, then they said, you have conflict of interest, please go outside the room. Back again. And I Just came back and said that you are served for a second time. Five more. Five more. That's right. I have uh, four <laughs> vice chairmen. Uh -huh. uh, former Prime Minister, Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi is a vice chairman. Uh, Jose Ramos Horta is a vice chairman. Former President of East Timor. Former Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan, Shogun Aziz, is a vice chairman. And former uh, Prime Minister of Austria, mm -hmm. the Holy Chancellor there, uh, Alfred Kusenbal, mm -hmm. is also the Vice Chairman. Mm -hmm. And we have Foreign Minister of India, uh, uh, South Korea, Japan, China, uh, Indonesia, including the Vice President uh, as, as members. Mm -hmm. We also have the former President of uh, Poland. Alexander Kiewinowski, mm -hmm. former president of Chile, Chile. Ricardo Lagos, mm -hmm. uh, former prime minister of Italy, mm -hmm. Romano Prodi, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, members of the APRC. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very influential and very, I think this, the APRC is a different kind of international NGO, which is indirectly influencing the policy making of the world in the future and currently in the future. But international lawyer, you have been mainly working in the context of ASEAN. Uh, many people are interested in the ASEAN um, future. So what is the role and vision of ASEAN in the 21st century? Well, I think ASEAN is like other regional organizations uh, are facing uh, uh, lots of opportunities and challenges. Uh, I think the success of ASEAN is that uh, in the past 52 years, looking back, we are able mm -hmm. to get 10 countries together mm -hmm. despite differences in the political background and the ideological background. As you know, uh, before the Cold War, uh, as 10 ASEAN countries have had different mm -hmm. uh, affiliations, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Some were uh, close to China, some were close to the Soviet Union, some were, were close to the United States. Mm -hmm. Yet we uh, uh, created an institutional institutional arrangement, legal arrangement, where all countries could work together mm -hmm. as a group. And since 2001, I think ASEAN has decided that our objective is ASEAN community. Mm -hmm. And uh, to have to be, to be able to be a strong ASEAN community, mm -hmm. we need to have three pillars. Mm -hmm. So the first pillar is the uh, political security pillar. Mm -hmm. The second is the ASEAN economic uh, mm -hmm. community, economic pillar. And the third is social and cultural pillar. Mm -hmm. So these are three areas mm -hmm. that ASEAN will be working together uh, very closely. Mm -hmm. And since 2015, I think uh, the, the, the integration has uh, witnessed a great progress, mm -hmm. especially in the economic field. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think ASEAN, uh, uh, challenges on, on ASEAN, there are several issues, especially as Ch Thailand is a chairman of ASEAN this year. This year? Yes, mm -hmm. starting from, from, from uh, January. January. Yeah, 2019. Mm -hmm. yeah, last year Singapore was a chairman, mm -hmm. and this year Thailand is mm -hmm. a chairman. I think uh, under this disruptive technology era, uh, what is the challenge for ASEAN is that first, how can ASEAN be future ready ASEAN? Mm -hmm. Ready 
for what? Ready for the disruptive technology era, mm. ready for the fourth industrial mm. uh, revolution. Mm. Uh, the business pat pattern has changed, the internet of things, Everything is changing. The artificial intelligence, mm. robotic machine learning. Mm. Educational system has to be, I'm not saying that reform, but it has to be overhauled. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, we cannot uh, uh, catch up with Korea, Japan, or United States, or Germany. So we will not be able to create innovation or uh, invention as has been created elsewhere. But I think what we need, well, some top university may be able to do it, but the whole country, I think we have to uh, offer short courses mm -hmm. for, so that our human resources can become technology user, mm -hmm. we can apply technology. No, you know, no. uh, we have seen the process of food mm -hmm. production uh, from stage one to stage 10 mm -hmm. without any people involved at mm -hmm. all. We may, be, we, may be, we may not be able to produce the same machine or robots doing all of these things, but we should be able to produce the human being mm -hmm. who can okay. operate the building uh, the, the, the machine, the mm -hmm. process, who can operate the machine, who can operate the robot, who can uh, uh, maintain, mm -hmm. uh, to provide maintenance mm -hmm. and repair mm -hmm. of this uh, thing. So I think we need short courses in various fields, in robotics, in the Internet of Things, in AI. Uh, of course, some top universities would be able to work on innovation. Uh, so that's for Thailand. Mm. But I think the same applies to uh, other ASEAN countries as well. Singapore mm. may be of an exception, mm -hmm. but I think Malaysia, Mekong countries, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, and the Philippines, Indonesia, Brunei, uh, would have to adjust themselves mm. uh, and adapt themselves mm. to be able to be survive. Mm -hmm. you know, of course, everyone said that we would leave, we would leave no one behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how to get everyone on this technological mm -hmm. technological train? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that you leave anyone behind, mm -hmm. but uh, there will be no tickets mm -hmm. for them to buy if they are not retrained. Mm -hmm. you no know, students graduated from university, even technolo mm -hmm. technology university five years ago. Mm -hmm. They are outdated. By outdated, now. right? Okay, so yeah. they And right. Thailand is in the middle of aging society. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you retrain people who are retired mm -hmm. to in order to come back? Yes, it's very strong, mm -hmm. you know, people who are over 60 mm -hmm. years old, their brain is still working very mm -hmm. sharply, but they have different kind of technology. Mm -hmm. They are not Gen Y, Gen Z. Mm -hmm. How can you bring them back yeah. to the to the workforce? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a challenge for not only Thailand, but mm -hmm. for ASEAN, but of course Thailand, Singapore, we have we are in the middle of the aging society. Mm -hmm. uh, Myanmar, Philippines, Indonesia, they have a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. How ten ASEAN countries can work together that we can train our people, mm -hmm. have a training program, short courses, mm -hmm. where we can leave the one behind. So that's in the first uh, challenge Check. of future ready ASEAN, mm -hmm. ready for the disruptive technology, mm -hmm. and secondly, future ready in terms of our internal communication. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that ten countries in ASEAN uh, still have a very uh, old-fashioned mm -hmm. way of internal communication. Mm -hmm. uh, the way our population, especially the, the Gen Y and the Gen Z, uh, commu communicate with each other through social media mm -hmm. and online, you know, e-commerce, things like that. So when they see us, policy makers or government officials, having meeting with a you know, long table, with mm -hmm. skirt uh, on the table, microphones, with flats, and then you uh, uh, shake hands like this on the stage. Mm. Uh, that doesn't mean anything and that doesn't to, know, the no. new, to the new generation. To the new generation. Yeah. So I think uh, there's a challenge for ASEAN. How can you, we said that we want to be a people-centered ASEAN, mm. but how we can bring on board mm. the new generation new of generation. ASEAN to have a sense of participation. Mm. If you don't have a sense of participation, mm -hmm. then they have no sense of ownership. Mm -hmm. No. So, and the sense of ownership cannot be cannot be created by writing a law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, a law has to be there, mm -hmm. allowing participation. Mm -hmm. But I think, on policy level, the mm -hmm. government and all stakeholders mm -hmm. would have to work very hard to ensure that we have the internal communication system mm -hmm. that is relevant mm -hmm. to the fourth industrial revolution, mm -hmm. the internal communication that can bring everyone on board. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the second issue that is a challenge mm -hmm. you know, of a future ready ASEAN. And the third area that I think ASEAN has to be a uh, future ready ASEAN is how to deal with the international 
uh, the changing international landscape. Mm. Uh, Rosalie, you would agree with me that uh, in the past five years, mm -hmm. and as we speak, mm -hmm. there's a change in the international uh, strategic, economic, and political landscape. The landscape is you know, you have uh, uh, Asia rising, you have China, yeah. you know, from number whatever to number two economy in the world. Mm -hmm. Korea is advancing yeah. a lot. You have India, India that is uh, liberalizing. Mm -hmm. You have ASEAN, six, 610 million people becoming one community. You have the One Belt, One Road mm -hmm. initiative. Yeah. You know, although Chinese. yeah, a lot of people have been uh, commenting it, mm -hmm. but uh, it's been going on. It's been uh, implemented mm -hmm. in various countries. You have the Indo-Pacific strategy mm -hmm. uh, initiated by the United States, mm -hmm. supported by Japan, India, and Australia, and New mm -hmm. Zealand, which led to the Quad Summit, mm -hmm. the Summit of Four Leaders. You know, mm -hmm. uh, two years ago mm -hmm. in the Philippines, you have uh, the 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 role of Robin B mm -hmm. as part of the global reserve. Mm -hmm. You know, the IMF board has agreed that uh, Robin B, the Chinese currency, is part of the special drawing special rights. Area. Yeah, uh, Robin B has become uh, international trading yeah. currency, mm -hmm. although a very it's small right uh, percentage right compared right. to the US and the mm -hmm. EU. Yeah. But it has overtaken the Japanese yen. Yeah. Japanese yen yeah. in right. a very yeah. short period of time. Mm -hmm. So I think the the international institutional mechanism of Development Bank, mm -hmm. AIIB was created, mm -hmm. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Uh, in, in the past 10 years ago, if something like this would happen, I'm sure that the Brentwood institutions mm -hmm. that we are used to yeah. would say no to it. Mm -hmm. But right now, when the Chinese initiated it, uh, all countries, mm -hmm. I believe, including South Korea, have participated in the AIB. In AIB. Sure. AIB. Sure. Uh, sure. Thailand, Thailand, about, Thailand is, uh, share, share is about 6% for Yes, but the uh, big chance as well. Thailand uh, is, uh, is a founding member as mm -hmm. well. So, I mean, people ask me about this new development bank, the BRICS, the AIIB, mm -hmm. I said, well, the more the barrier, mm -hmm. because we need the infrastructure development. But mm -hmm. if you think back in retrospect, 10, 10, 15 years ago, if some idea like this would be floated, mm -hmm. the Brentwood institutions would say, no, we, mm -hmm. we have World Bank, we have Asian Development mm -hmm. Bank, we have African Development mm -hmm. Bank. So I think that's very new development institution, institutional mechanism, monetary system, we have the CMIM, mm -hmm. Chiang Mai Initiative, multilateralization, mm -hmm. where ASEAN plus three, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. contributed uh, uh, their reserves mm -hmm. into this pool, this called mm -hmm. reserve pooling of 240 billion US dollars. So uh, similarly to the Asian monetary fund idea, mm -hmm. Uh, proposed by Sakaki Bara, mm -hmm. the former Deputy Finance Minister of Japan, mm -hmm. in 1990, before 19, during 1997 mm -hmm. of financial crisis, mm -hmm. but was rejected by Western mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So 10 countries in, in ASEAN and China, yes. Japan, Japan Korea, Korea got together in Chiang Mai mm -hmm. and said that let's mm -hmm. have a lateral swap arrangement. Later it becomes better, uh, multilateralized, mm -hmm. it's called multilateral swap arrangement. And then it becomes Chiang Mai Initiative Multilateralization, CMIM, mm -hmm. with the basically credit line, if I can call it that, of 240 billion US dollars. So, Professor uh, Joseph Stiglitz, the, the Nobel, Nobel Law, 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 Laureate, has yeah. said that the CMIM is an emerging new Asian financial architecture. Oh, and perhaps that Asian. is something that other regions, like America mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Africa, should look at it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then you have this anti-globalization. Mm -hmm. In the countries in Asia, in the past, many of us have been skeptical about the globalization, especially the lack of safety net, uh, the have-nots uh, were not able to catch up, mm -hmm. the farmers, the poor people. But then now, the countries that are, in, you know, in, are not in favor of globalization mm -hmm. are not Asian countries. Mm -hmm. China, Korea, Japan, 10 ASEAN mm -hmm. countries, India said that we have to have, we have to continue to have urban economy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, our economy will be affected. Otherwise, our poor people mm -hmm. uh, will be affected. Mm -hmm. And then you have the United States, America first, anti-globalization. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Brexit, mm -hmm. which is a part Brexit. of anti-globalization. Mm -hmm. You have the rise of the right wing, mm -hmm. nationalist governments, mm -hmm. uh, parties, mm -hmm. not government everywhere. parties mm -hmm. everywhere, especially mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. So how could ASEAN 10 prepare for these changes in international strategy, economic and political landscape? Mm -hmm. New strategies of uh, major powers, mm -hmm. uh, anti-globalization, mm -hmm. 
uh, and lastly, the new regional grouping. Mm. You know, we have created, we meaning us, 16 countries, including Korea, South Korea, uh, the RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic mm. Partnership, mm. which would be the largest mm. uh, free trade area free trade in the world, area, in, the world. Uh, in short of the TPP. Mm -hmm. Now, TPP may re be revived mm -hmm. with the CPTPP, mm -hmm. Comprehensive and Progressive mm -hmm. Partnership, we don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, uh, APEC countries, mm -hmm. APEC, sorry, APEC economies mm -hmm. have agreed that we should look at the future. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we look at the possibility of FTA, mm -hmm. MTAAP, Free Trade Agreement mm -hmm. of Asia Pacific, mm -hmm. putting Asian countries and Pacific countries together President Xi Jinping said that we should not compete with TPP mm -hmm. or RCEP. Mm -hmm. Let's work together. Mm -hmm. So, to me, ASEAN is almost like the past. Mm -hmm. We said ASEAN integration mm -hmm. will start to take place in mm -hmm. 2015. Mm -hmm. This year, we will be negotiating the RCEP. Mm -hmm. Leaders met in November last year in Singapore saying that we would try to finish the negotiation this year, 2019. This is present. Mm -hmm. But our future is free trade. Mm -hmm. Agreement of Asia and Pacific. So, I mean, these are some examples. So, this third challenge is that you have to be future ready mm -hmm. to deal with external relations, mm -hmm. the changes in oh. uh, 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 the landscape. Full so, change. future ready mm -hmm. for destructive technology, mm -hmm. future ready for our internal communication, mm -hmm. future ready for the external relations, the changes in external relations. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, this is these are the major challenges. Mm. But as Thailand is the chairman of ASEAN this year, I could see that there are two or three issues that will become a challenge for Thailand. Mm. One is the Rakhine State issue, mm. the Rohingyas, mm. because it's ranked as like number four topic in mm. the world today. Mm. You know? mm. The West call it ethnic cleansing. Mm. Myanmar said that it's a security issue. It's, it's not the ethnic cleansing. You know how Thailand mm. can deal with it. How ASEAN can deal with it. Yes, problem. how plus three. Uh, mm. would work with ASEAN to deal with it. We have still the issue of the South China Sea mm. that the tension rise, rises from time to time. Mm. We have the, the challenge of how ASEAN 10 countries mm. with plus three can work together for disaster relief. Mm. It's, a pos there is a possibility that we can set up the ASEAN plus three mm. uh, uh, disaster relief fund, mm. for example, that mm. if anything happens, mm. the the tropical storm somewhere, mm -hmm. the tsunami right. somewhere, mm -hmm. God forbid. Uh, officials can, it can, it can lead to automatic triggering mechanism. Yeah. You don't have to go to the cabinet mm -hmm. of each country mm -hmm. to approve the budget, to see who has what equipment, mm -hmm. so it can be done automatically. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we were talking about that in 10 years ago in Chiang Mai. So yes, yes. The right if the fund is available, because mm -hmm. in ASEAN, to be very frank with you, the problem is always who is funding it. Mm -hmm. If we would send C-130, mm -hmm. if we would send the water bomber to uh, distinguish the fire in the mm -hmm. peatlands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when they, they burnt the, the palm oil mm -hmm. in Indonesia and the haze covered Singapore, Malaysia, southern part of Thailand, the Philippines, how ASEAN 10 can work together and with uh, plus mm -hmm. three, China, Japan, Korea, South Korea on the disaster relief. Mm -hmm. So I think these are challenges for ASEAN mm -hmm. in, in uh, starting this year mm -hmm. and in this decade. Okay, Thailand, uh, Thai uh, politics. What is the main focus of Thai, Thai foreign policy or principle? Because you're a former foreign minister of Thai government, so we'd like to know uh, the Thai uh, foreign policy uh, vision and principle in the future. Because Thailand is a very uh, central country, of course. Uh, Southeast Asia. Well, I think uh, in the past 150 years, the foreign policy position mm -hmm. of Thailand has been very consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, we would not be a party to a war. Mm -hmm. uh, we would be a bridge mm -hmm. uh, to connect countries of different beliefs, different uh, ideologies, mm -hmm. different political and economic system. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to see the uh, balance of influence mm -hmm. of uh, major protagonists, mm -hmm. of major players mm -hmm. in the area and uh, outside the uh, 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 Asian uh, area as well. So that has been our position. We are very close to the United States. We are the uh, oldest treaty ally mm -hmm. of the United States in Southeast Asia. We are very close to China. Mm -hmm. 
we are very close to Japan and South Korea, we are very close to Russia, we are very close to European countries, and we are very close to Australia and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you look at a certain month, we may be close to one country, but you cannot do that. You have to look at the whole time span. Mm -hmm. And you see that we try to strike a balance mm -hmm. uh, of uh, uh, you know, the, the, the right influence mm -hmm. from countries uh, around the world, economically and politically. We look at ourselves again, as they say, as a rich mm -hmm. uh, in, in the region. Uh, so that's why when the Taika Tamil Elam and the Sri Lankan government would like to have the negotiation, mm -hmm. the peace was brokered mm -hmm. by Norway, but the renew of the first two important talks mm -hmm. was held, were held in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So I was contact when I was foreign minister mm -hmm. if the Thailand would be the venue mm -hmm. for the peace talk between the two. We kept it quiet, if they wanted quiet, mm -hmm. we let them do the press conference, mm -hmm. if they wanted to do the press conference, mm -hmm. because we are not party to the conflict, to the conflict, or, mm -hmm. or, the, but, or the thing. You know, when China and Japan, we have some differences over mm -hmm. that shrine, mm -hmm. uh, in the shrine. Yeah. So both of them came to explain to Thailand, mm -hmm. uh, because Thailand is a, is an impartial country mm -hmm. in that regard. Impartial. Yeah, we were involved in the peace process in Cambodia, mm -hmm. the four factions. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, there's a Paris informal meeting, mm -hmm. Jakarta informal mm -hmm. meeting, but the very informal informal mm -hmm. meeting leading to the Paris informal meeting, Jakarta informal meeting, mm -hmm. were held in Thailand. Mm -hmm. when, before I became foreign minister, back then, I was on loan from uh, Chulalongkorn University mm -hmm. to be advisor to the late Prime Minister General Chan Chai. Mm -hmm. I was involved in the uh, bilateral trade and relations mm -hmm. with the United States, mm -hmm. IP, intellectual property issue, and at the same time, it was involved in the peace process in mm -hmm. Cambodia. So we hosted the meeting uh, between Prince Hanuk at that time mm -hmm. before he became king again, and uh, Mr. Hun Sen, mm -hmm. Prime Minister in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. We hosted the meeting with the, even the Khmer Rouge, or the Khmer Seri in Bangkok. Uh, all of this in informal settings, trying to understand each other's position. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the first uh, MOU signed between Prince Sen and Hun mm Sen -hmm. to set up the Supreme uh, uh, National Council mm -hmm. uh, was done in Bangkok mm -hmm. wow. during in the late 80s mm -hmm. uh, before they met in Japan mm -hmm. for the formal uh, setting up of the Supreme National Council mm -hmm. between Prince Sen and Hun Sen. So I mean, these are examples, some of the examples of uh, Thailand's role. Uh, has been a renew for the peace mm -hmm. talk, has been uh, helping the peace talk elsewhere because of the Thai foreign policy mm -hmm. that we are impartial, mm -hmm. we are not party to the conflict. Mm -hmm. um, we were pressured, I would say, mm -hmm. to join the coalition of the willing mm -hmm. in Iraq and we said that no, that is contrary to our position. We participated in the post-conflict reconstruction you know, we help uh, reconstruct Afghanistan at the UN resolution. Mm -hmm. the UN resolution after the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, we joined the international uh, bodies mm -hmm. for the post-conflict reconstruction. Mm -hmm. We sent our troops to East Timor mm -hmm. to help uh, develop an issue mm -hmm. after the war is over. Mm -hmm. We help in Africa. We help elsewhere, mm -hmm. but it is the post-conflict reconstruction. Mm -hmm don't send our forces mm -hmm. to join the war. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's our that's our position. Mm -hmm. And I think that will continue mm -hmm. uh, to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Thailand as chairman of ASEAN, mm -hmm. you know, we want to make sure that ASEAN is ready for the future, mm -hmm. that ASEAN could be a good bridge mm -hmm. between East Asia and South, South Asia. Asia. Mm -hmm. the, uh, ASEAN can be a good bridge between Russia and the US okay. in the region. In of course, we will be involved problem. in the Middle East. We would like to ensure mm -hmm. that the South China Sea mm -hmm. will not become a blink, mm -hmm. will not become a flashpoint. Mm -hmm. And that, again, if I may say so, coincides with the work of APRC. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the major projects, if I can refer to, uh, if you permit me to refer to APRC, mm -hmm. uh, was the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, uh, we said that why don't we try to turn the conflict into cooperation, mm -hmm. uh, conf conflict avoidance, mm -hmm. which is the conflict part of international law. Mm -hmm. yes. um, we said that why don't you look at the Gulf of Thailand, mm -hmm. 
the name is called Gulf of Thailand, but we have many owners. Mm -hmm. We we have had conflict, uh, overlapping area mm -hmm. between Thailand and Malaysia, for mm -hmm. example. But in 1978, we agreed to disagree. Mm -hmm. You know, because you just cannot uh, argue uh, uh, whether that particular part of the sea belongs to Malaysia or to Thailand. Mm -hmm. So we said that instead of going to an international court, mm -hmm. the law of the sea allows mm -hmm. uh, for provisional arrangement. Mm -hmm pending the final uh, sea boundary delimitation, mm -hmm. which may take 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. So we agreed to set up the joint development area of oil and gas, mm -hmm. which is allowed under the law of the sea. So since 1978, mm -hmm. there were no clash mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. Malaysia mm -hmm. and Thailand, Thailand in the Gulf of Thailand, because we are happy with the profit sharing mm -hmm. and production sharing out of the joint development area of oil and gas mm -hmm. in the Gulf of Thailand. Mm -hmm. So I said that, why don't we we adopt this approach mm -hmm. to the South China approach. Sea? Mm -hmm. you, know, you can start from something that is less political. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you know, the, the countries that claim the, mm -hmm. the overlapping area areas yeah, mm -hmm. would be China, which is China, 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 yeah, and then Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Vietnam, mm -hmm. and Brunei. Mm -hmm. Brunei. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thailand mm -hmm. is uh, uh, you know non claimant mm -hmm. state. Myanmar, Singapore, you know, Cambodia, Laos. There we are not claimant state. Mm -hmm. So four countries in ASEAN and China. In China. Indonesia doesn't have the overlapping claim, mm -hmm. but it has the conflict on the fishing mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we said, why don't we apply this idea of what you call the functional cooperation? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. in the in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, the functional cooperation can refer to many economic mm -hmm. activities. If we can start from something less political, mm -hmm. like joint tourism management. Mm -hmm in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, we can think of the joint environmental research mm -hmm. in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. So that the South China Sea is not an area of a taboo. Mm -hmm. It's an area that cooperation can take place mm -hmm. all the way to joint development area of oil and gas mm -hmm. in, the future. in the future. So we've been talking, at first China said no to mm -hmm. all of this. And when I met mm -hmm. Foreign Minister Wang Yi four times, <laughs> I met uh, then Vice President Li Yuan Chao, mm -hmm. our two president. I met the leaders of uh, all claimant and non claimant states uh, quietly uh, until last year. Uh, there was a working group established mm -hmm. on the uh, environmental research, mm -hmm. uh, which is a policy advocated by Prime Minister Mayu mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So the first working group already started. Mm -hmm. So that means that on the declaration of the, on the Code of Conduct for the South China Sea, pending the signing of the Code of Conduct mm. in the South China Sea, we can create, perhaps, the, an idea of the functional cooperation or the environmental issue to start with. Mm. And if Thailand, as an uh, chairman of ASEAN, can push that forward mm. to be endorsed by ministers, mm. to be endorsed by leaders of China and mm. ASEAN, I think that's the way to go, that Asian countries can find a way to turn conflict into cooperation. cooperation. So that's how international law mm -hmm. can be applied in a peaceful mm -hmm. way. Wow. Great. Wow. This is 2018, last year, there was a big change. There were big changes in the Korean Peninsula for the denuclearization of the Korean, North Korea as well as the whole Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And in a few weeks, uh, there will be the second US DPRT summit in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, what should they do for the complete peacemaking and complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula? Well, first of all, I have to commend all parties involved, mm -hmm. especially President Moon Jae in, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to do all the hard work mm -hmm. so that the, the dialogue could take place. Mm -hmm. In fact, APRC was approached uh, once. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, because uh, for, former foreign minister, Yu Won Kwan, mm -hmm. Uh, he arranged for me to meet uh, the foreign minister, then uh, Yim Yong Se, mm -hmm. and uh, I met uh, Prime Minister Fukuda, mm -hmm. former Prime Minister of Japan, mm -hmm. who well respected. Mm -hmm. I met uh, Vice President Li Yuan Chao uh, of China, and saying that the PIC uh, had been asked to do this and ask for advice. Mm -hmm. uh, but we feel that the issue is too big mm -hmm. for us to do. Mm -hmm. and even to handle. To to handle, even the UN cannot handle it. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to approach uh, differently. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you see, we did not have any ambition mm -hmm. to be a mediator. Mm -hmm. What we planned to do was to organize a listening tour mm -hmm. 
to North Korea, to South Korea, to China, to Japan, to the United States, just to hear the views of people involved. Because the view expressed to the non-state international organization that is impartial may be different from what each party expressed to uh, the state organizations. So that's what we plan. Mm -hmm. And then we can compare those. Mm -hmm. We can compare those to the relevant players. Mm -hmm. So that's what we thought. But again, we, we, we had not done it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad that uh, the new president uh, had a lot of initiatives mm -hmm. and were a lot uh, behind the scene that has led to the, the meeting between uh, uh, North Korea, Kim Jong-un, and South mm -hmm. Korea president, mm -hmm. and then to the president uh, Trump, uh, Trump mm -hmm. and before that, President Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. So I very much look forward mm -hmm. to, um, to the second meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also involved a little bit when I was foreign minister uh, because I I had a good dialogue. You know, we have a normal relation with North Korea. You know, mm -hmm. we have they have embassy here. Embassy here, in yes. Okay. We have embassy in Beijing, mm -hmm. North Korea. They, uh, they have, uh, you know, maybe I should put it in the right writing, but they have a lot of debts mm -hmm. <laughs> on rice. Uh, we have relations. The foreign minister came to Thailand. The president of the presidium uh, came to Thailand. Mm -hmm. I was foreign minister, so we had a chance to talk a lot to see what is needed and then I delivered that message to uh, General Colin Powell mm -hmm. who is, uh, was a Secretary of State at that time mm -hmm. and when President Bush came here during the APEC 2003, mm -hmm. uh, Prime Minister of Thailand also asked me to debrief mm -hmm. uh, the informal meeting mm -hmm. on this particular issue. Colin Powell was convinced that perhaps dialogue can take place uh, but, but President Bush sort of brushed it aside and said, no, 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 I will not do it. I will not follow the same mistake as uh, Bill Clinton. So I have to stop. So there's no way if uh, there's no willingness. In the, in the private meeting. In the private meeting. In the private meeting. Um, so uh, that's why I said I, I'm very sincere in commending the uh, President of South Korea and all of those involved who have uh, uh, dedicated so much time and effort and patience and understanding to make sure that this happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it has to be based on sincerity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mm -hmm. We should not expect that after the second meeting, uh, everything will be resolved. Mm -hmm. But I think what is most important is that since last year, mm -hmm. there has been uh, the situation of, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in, it, in the juice in Belo, uh, we would call Isabel it, yeah, mm -hmm. a non-war situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe not a complete peace yet, uh -huh. but at least is there's no increasing tension. Mm. This is kind of turning point, moving point. Yes, yeah. yes. It's from a, from well, it's a good moving war. point. It's a game changer. Peace. It's a good point of departure mm. from the time. You know, if if we we go back last year in this month, mm -hmm. a lot of people thought that World War Three would take place mm -hmm. very soon. Mm. But uh, by June last year, mm -hmm. you know, there was a, the bilateral talk. So I think all parties have to give uh, everyone a chance mm -hmm. uh, and they, 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 all the people involved have to be sincere to mm -hmm. each other and have to understand the constraints of each other and have to understand that peace dialogue is a process. Mm -hmm. It's not the end in itself. Mm -hmm. you know, the process is very important. Mm -hmm. And the process in itself is an end, is an achievement in itself. Mm -hmm. You may have one big achievement of complete peace, which may be Unification, economic term or political term or whatever you would like to define it, but in each step of dialogue, mm. that peace is created or no, no tension is created. Mm. Is achievement in itself. Achievement itself. Right. So there will be mm. a lot of small achievements, mm. step by step, step by step. You know, although we call it a process, mm. but it is the is achievement mm. in itself mm. towards the bigger achievement, mm. which may take years from now. But I think it's good that they start by understanding each other about mm -hmm. MIA, the missing in uh, person, missing in action, mm -hmm. how to return the, the uh, dismantling of the nuclear facilities, so although so that right. has to be verified mm -hmm. to increase the confidence mm -hmm. and the economic and humanitarian assistance mm -hmm. led by the United States, the, the, the you know, the, the, what you call the uh, suspension of the joint uh, 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 drill mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the sea mm -hmm. with the South Korea, things like that. So I think it's moving towards the right direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, great. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I have to ask you as professor. Oh, it's a really difficult question to 
say, but I'm hopeful. hopeful. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah because President Moon Jae-in is working very hard mm -hmm. and has been achieving a lot of some um, uh, peace talks mm -hmm. uh, since last June. Mm -hmm. We never thought about such a kind of peace two years ago, because just in 2017, uh, until November, we, there was a nuclear uh, test in North Korea. You, you don't know how much we were worried, we were scared. Because he, for example, here is Bangkok. In Chiang Mai, there, was a, there is a, some nuclear bomb, bomb test. Mm -hmm. So you, it's a really serious situation. But now, you're right. So if, if there is not a full peace, but there is not a risk of armed conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a kind of some uh, today, more uh, younger generation of Asia are studying in such low. Uh, would you give a piece of advice for these boys and girls? Well, I think uh, I would urge uh, students in Asia to look at international law that it has relevance, mm. create relevance to the day-to-day -day life. Mm. The international law uh, is a basis of rule of law, mm -hmm. which is a basis of peace. Mm -hmm. Um, we cannot, uh, international law is a basis for development. Mm -hmm. We cannot have peace without development and vice versa. Uh, international law refers to economic activities. Mm -hmm. International law refers to how people would live together mm -hmm. in the world. So if you look at international law from various aspects, mm -hmm. including international law of technology, mm -hmm. And then you will see that international law will play a very important part mm -hmm. uh, in your normal life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so thank you very thank much you. for the long time. Much, okay. <laughs> yeah.